please welcome the Director of Media and Innovation Lab at Fresh Energy, Rob Davis. Thanks, Rob. Good morning. I'd like to talk about two simple things. One is wonderful, and one is horrible. Wonderful. Imagine a change in society faster than the rate of growth of the internet, and faster than the rate of growth of mobile phones. Horrible. A global crisis that threatens our food systems, as well as many of nature's most familiar faces. My name is Rob Davis. I'm Director of Media and Innovation Lab at Fresh Energy. We're located in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, just a couple of blocks off the Mississippi River. Fresh Energy shapes and drives practical and visionary energy policy that benefits all. We had the good fortune of hosting Nancy Fund, longtime Verge leader and participant, for a conversation about the future of the electric grid this summer. And she said this, it is important to use the political process to make innovation thrive. And we agree. We believe in public policy and how it can create markets and drive innovation that creates more economic opportunity as well as improves the health of our communities and the environment. Now in Minnesota, we started just this past summer a uh, education campaign calling for nutritious bee and butterfly food on thousands of acres of solar. You see, in Minnesota, we're about to have a giant solar bloom in 2016. And uh, so we wanted to see and make sure we get all the benefits from that change. You remember that change in society that I mentioned? Well, this is uh, since 1992 to 2012. This is the rate of change for both mobile phones and the internet. And this is that same data point for solar. It goes up to 2009 because that's when something really interesting happened. Solar got cheap. And from 2009 to 2012, the price of solar fell by more than 50%. And it's still falling. Now, in Minnesota, we're about to get a lot more solar. And that's because we put some policies in place. By 2020, we'll get about 1.5% of our electricity from solar. And by 2030, we'll get about 10%. Now, nationwide, we're really used to seeing solar that looks like this. But in Minnesota, we're proposing a solar future that looks like this. <laughs> no, like this. Uh, okay, like this. <laughs> and like this. So we really believe in the productive use of farmland. And we know that if we can do this in Minnesota, you can do it just about anywhere. Now, this photo was taken in the UK, where this is already a standard practice. It's also a standard practice throughout Germany. So, for our public education campaign, we partnered with the landscape architect, Russ Henry, as well as MacArthur Genius Award winner, Dr. Marla Spivak, and her colleague, Dr. Karen Oberhauser. Let's hear from them. Hi, my name is Karen Oberhauser, and I'm a professor in the Department of Fisheries, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology at the University of Minnesota. And this is my colleague, Marla Spivak, who is a professor in the Department of Entomology. And I study butterflies, and she studies bees. If people eat fruits and vegetables, they should probably care about pollinators because they're so important to our diet. Pollinators are animals that move pollen from flower to flower. For bees, habitat is everything because it provides them with good nutrition. Monarchs need access to nectar, which comes from the same kinds of plants that bees need. And when bees and butterflies have good nutrition, that provides the substrate to help their immune systems. We know that habitat loss is the leading cause of the declines of almost every species put in habitat that's going to make a huge difference to biodiversity. It would be wonderful to have flowers and pollinator habitat around and under solar panels and solar arrays. And it, it will look better and there's everything positive and nothing negative about it. Okay, quick show of hands, quick show of hands. Who eats vegetables or fruits? Okay. So the situation for honeybees is quite dire. Since the 1950s, more than 50% of the honeybee population has disappeared. And as the Washington Post highlighted earlier this year, nearly one billion monarch butterflies 
have vanished since 1900, uh, 1990. Now, the White House is, is leading a charge. They formed a task force and put out a report earlier this year. They've encouraged all of us to plant pollinator gardens in our yards. And they also identified the unique value of the honeybee, saying that it specifically adds $15 billion of value to our food system. So we have a crisis. We have a proposed solution. Let's, let's do the math. Let's look at the cost and let's look at the impact. So on the cost side, this, you know, this could be a little complicated. Let's, uh, let's get some help. Hey, Siri. Could you calculate the cost of um, putting you know, Class 5 gravel on 4,000 acres of solar sites as opposed to using a pollinator-friendly seed mix? Hello, Rob. You don't need a supercomputer for this. The costs of plant seed are equal or less than using gravel. Oh, thanks, Siri. That's great. I appreciate that. It is important that we create more habitat for our pollinators. Oh. Siri, I had, I had no idea this issue was so important to you. Yeah, let's just say that it's kind of a family thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Siri. Okay, specifically, every single one of these solar projects has a site plan. That's the, the security perimeter, the visual buffers. All we're proposing is for all those projects to have a vegetative plan as well. Call for deep-rooted, pollinator-friendly seed mix to go under the panels. It'll take the water that comes off those panels and channel it right down into the aquifer. And then around the periphery, maybe some taller plants, some flowers, some milkweed. We also know that the math works out on this because we approached a bunch of solar companies in Minnesota. And they not only helped us take out a full-page ad educating the public about this campaign, but they pledged to build all of their projects in Minnesota with pollinator habitat. So let's look at impact. What can one person do? Now, the White House has encouraged us all to plant pollinators in our gardens. But on the other hand, in Minnesota, we're going we're to build about 4,000 acres of solar sites in 2016. 4,000 acres. That is a drop in the bucket. That's 0.01% of our 27 million acres of farmland. But compared to a backyard, 4,000 acres is more than 2 million 6 by 12 pollinator gardens. That's one garden for every single one of Minnesota's 1.4 million single-family homes and another million to sprinkle around Wisconsin and Iowa. And these land lease contracts are for 25 years. So Minnesota, 4,000 acres, 4,700 acres in Georgia, even more in North Carolina. Public policy is not yet set on this for a standard. But yet, nationwide, we're about to build more than 80,000 acres of solar sites just between next year and 2020. As solar moves from, from California and the Southwest, we at Fresh Energy know that there's a tremendous opportunity because all of that land is farmland. We can get more benefit from all of that space. And so as you're thinking about a solar power purchase agreement, Follow the lead of what happened in Minnesota when a couple of companies and organizations said, you know what, we'd like to see a clause in that contract specifying pollinator habitat right in the contract. These two things are better together, utility solar and pollinator habitat. Fresh Energy is a nonprofit, and uh, my colleague back in Minnesota just, just tweeted this. Okay, this is our, from our Fresh Energy account. You can get out your phones. And, uh, you know, if you've enjoyed today's talk, if you've learned something about Siri, if you've laughed, if you've raised your hand, share a retweet with us on this idea. Let's send a message. Share a retweet with us. If you do, please take one of the buttons that's either on your table or find me, and uh, you can have one for yourself and you know, anybody else that you want to share the idea with. There's also a Reddit AMA coming up for additional questions. Fresh Energy, we're a nonprofit. We draw our support nationwide from organizations, uh, foundations, and philanthropists. This campaign is one of the ways we are helping America transition to a clean energy economy while maximizing all of the benefits. I'm Rob Davis. Thank you.
Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you.